Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, I'm asked what year it is, 2018. Ben says a big word, paleopathologies, and I say a slightly shorter word, paleontology. <laughs> Starting off the news this week, a NASA probe on Mars has taken a look at the inner workings of the planet to, for the first time, get some details and actual numbers on its internal structure. This isn't an update from the Curiosity rover, however, but instead NASA's InSight craft, which landed on the Red Planet back at the end of 2018. It is the first mapping of a planet's internal structure other than Earth's, and so now we have two different planets to look at in more detail. The structure, histories and futures of such massive bodies may be better understood as these numbers are studied further. As for the numbers themselves, as always there'll be a link below to the sources we use, and I'll make sure to include the papers that were published in Science Magazine there too. The way the internal structure of Mars was measured was by analysing different signals from Mars quakes. While only a few were able to be particularly helpful, the UK French-led team found that the average thickness of Mars's crust is actually greater than that of Earth's, despite our planet being larger than Mars. In other news, there is the fascinating description of a new genus and species of microsaur, a grouping that should technically now be called Recumbirostrans, from the Carboniferous of Illinois. Named Yermangandir Bolti after the famous world serpent from Norse mythology, this animal is known from an almost fully complete skeleton preserved as a part and counterpart inside a concretion. This was a recumbirostrum with a very elongated body, and incredibly, a range of different scale types are also preserved in the specimen. Analysis of these scales show that they are similar in structure to those of modern snakes and burrowing reptiles, being shaped to enable body-based propulsion and to better shed sediment off their bodies. This evidence, along with features of the actual skeleton, strongly suggests a fossorial or burrowing lifestyle for Jürmengander, an interesting mode of life for this organism. So a great microsaur discovery, always nice to hear more about these little-known mystery tetrapods. And finally from me this week is some fascinating research that has investigated the question of how well could baby pterosaurs fly? The paper explains how three models have been proposed in the past to explain the flight capabilities of these prehistoric reptiles as they grew. Firstly, the flap early model suggests baby pterosaurs were very precorial and able to use powered flight not long after they had hatched. Then there's the fly late model, which proposes that baby pterosaurs could not fly until they had grown to about half of their full adult size, and were very dependent on parental care at first. And finally is the glide early model, the idea that baby pterosaurs could only glide to begin with and weren't capable of true powered flight until later. This new paper, therefore, properly tests these models by examining the gliding capabilities and wing bone strength of young pterosaurs and comparing them with other animals, discovering that these baby reptiles were excellent flyers at a very young age. As such, the flap early model is supported by the results. In addition, the study also finds evidence for these baby pterosaurs occupying very different niches to the adults. The shape of the wings in younger pterosaurs was very different from the older animals and indicates that they were more capable of more manoeuvrable flight, suggesting that they were better suited to life in denser, more vegetated habitats compared to the open areas favoured by adults. This means that pterosaurs probably shifted niches as they grew older, and also suggests that parental care was not actually necessary for these animals. However, the paper also notes that since pterosaurs were such a long-lived and diverse group, this might not be the case in every species. Still, it's a brilliant look into how these amazing reptiles once lived, and it'll be interesting to see what future research into this topic discovers. And now over to Ben, with some more paleontology news and an announcement that we've been dying to make. 